Hey beloved, Krista Pettiford here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I want to share five ways to embrace change during the holidays when you're in a new season of life. So I'm sharing five ways to embrace change and embrace the season that you're in, to embrace holidays differently when you're in a new season of life. And so I think that's important because for many reasons, people are in different seasons of life. And when we go through a different season or face or we are navigating um, unexpected change or even change that was expected, um, holidays are happen differently. Maybe there's something that you used to do that you're used to doing that is no longer going to look the same. And sometimes that can bring about depression or sadness when you're used to spending time maybe with family. Maybe you're divorced. Maybe you feel like you're still single um, and you wish it was different. Maybe you're an empty nester and you're married and or divorced. <laughs> Um, I don't know what it is. Maybe you are away from home. Maybe you are in a season where you're doing life alone. You're in a different town. You don't have really close family and friends with you. Holidays are different this season. If that is you, then I want to share with you five ways, I might add more, <laughs> that you can embrace change and enjoy this holiday season despite of the different things and the changes that have taken place in your life and so so if you're in a season a, a new beginning a season of change and holidays are going to be different this video is for you the holiday season is different when we have experience change the people the places the things that we normally do change when our seasons change and the holidays look different as I said but just because your holidays have changed and they're different doesn't mean that the holidays have to be depressing or difficult let me say that again just because your holidays are going to be different this year it doesn't mean it has to be difficult it has to be a difficult season or a depressing season. You can make the most of them and you can find delight in the day, Thanksgiving and Christmas and the whole season. So I want to help you focus on how you can make it delightful for you, how you can enjoy it and not see it as a difficult or depressing task or discouraging um, season because it's not what it used to be because it's different. Amen. So number one, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays. And I also enjoy Christmas. I love decorating for Christmas, but I love cooking my kids' favorite things. And I just have a, a thing that I used to do with my children, a tradition of being thankful, remembering to be thankful for everything. And my I'm an empty nester now. So I'm an empty nester and I am not married and holidays look different. While I will see some of my children for the holidays, it does not look like it used to. I'm in a smaller place. I downsized, something I later regretted, um, but I'm making the best of it. It's a nice condo, but it's not my big house where I can invite a whole bunch of people over and just really do the holidays the way I used to do them. And that's a decision I made without thinking. So now, as my as far as my kids and my friends and family goes, it's gonna look different anyway. One of my daughters lives out of state. My other uh, adult children have um, their dad's side of the family and different things that they do. So we try to get together sometime during the day, but it's not like it used to be when we did things uh, together all day or as one big family and sometimes that takes a hard that takes a while to get used to even when they were adults for a while we still did things uh, it was still a plan for us to do the whole day together but now I want to respect the fact that they could have other plans and so that is different for me but I have to remember that it's not about me it's about Christ so that's number one it's about Christ and sharing his love whether it's Thanksgiving or it is Christmas. So I have this, I've always served, but even uh, whether or not my kids are with me, with or without my kids, I am going to find ways to serve and to give to other, 
others because that's what it's really about when we make it about us um, which it is about sharing love and being with the people you love. So I don't want to take away from that aspect of, of it. But when we think about how we can give to others um, and how we can celebrate the ones that are with us versus the ones that are not there and serve and give to others, then that's filling. That is filling. When we serve, it we are refilled with the love of God and we are we refocus what it's all about. And so I'm going to say... If you are feeling like there's an empty space there, remember what it's about. And maybe that hasn't been something in the forefront because you included that before, but you also had all this family and people surrounding you. But remember what it's about and let that take up more time than it did prior. And then number two, set your mind to intentionally enjoy yourself during the holidays. If you're celebrating by yourself, do something fun. Take the trip if you can afford it. Take yourself out to eat at a restaurant you wanted to go to. Cook your favorite meal if you want to stay home. I've started doing something different with my youngest daughter um, because we also attend church together. If my other kids have plans, we go to dinner for like Easter and things like that versus making this big meal for them to maybe stop by. My other kids to maybe stop by. No, let's go have dinner. Let's go do something. Let's go to brunch. Let's do something different, right? Or let's go over friend's house. Let's not, you know, I don't want to hang my hat on what if they come over or whatever. And so do it. set yourself to intentionally enjoy yourself and not to be disappointed by who doesn't show or who doesn't invite you or what doesn't happen. Make your own plans, right? And then number three, say yes to the invitation. So that goes with number two. Make your own, uh, say, uh, say yes to the invitation to go to someone else's home or to their party. Sometimes we get invited to things and we say no. I, I'll speak for myself. I say no, but then I'm home alone. Maybe not for the holidays. I do see my kids, even though it's not like it was before, but you know, different things. And, and now I'm like, yeah, I'll go. Yeah, I'll go to your friends' giving. Yeah, I'll go to the Christmas brunch. Yeah, I'll go stop by your house because what else am I doing? And it, I'm always glad I went when I actually go and say yes. And so take someone up on the invitation or be the person who invites other people over to your house, house whether it's a small gathering or it's something big. Open your home and plan a holiday gathering with other people people in your circle. Invite your neighbors. I love to bake cookies and so I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to bake cookies and I'm going to give them out to people, not just my kids, but other people this year. I'm going to think of people and places that I can bring some holiday cheer and give cookies out because I've made cookies and fudge and all the things and I always make my kids these tins and I even send one to my daughter who lives in Georgia and of, of all the favorite things but make some for some other people and just drop them off with a little card and a little christmas cheer share the joy of the season right dress up when you go out take in a concert or a holiday event go see the lights even if you go by yourself jesus is with you go do something special or go with some girlfriends if you're a guy go with some guy friends um yeah if, you, if you're dating, enjoy a date. Don't make it something big, but enjoy if someone asks you out, right? I don't know what number I'm on, but I want to say this. Celebrate with the ones God has put in your life in this season and be present with them. Not Do not focus on those who are not here or those who do not show up. And I want to say something different. I, I, I'm saying that, but I also say there are some people who are only in your life for a reason or a season. If you've broken up or you've divorced or you've had a rift in a relationship or you are just in a new season and people can't be there. But then there are people who are going, who have lost loved ones, um, who are separated from their, from their loved ones, whether it's because of military service, someone passed away or you're in a different town. And sometimes you can just, and this is a, a separate thing. Um, I think this would be number Six, cook something 
or do something, find a way to honor the people in your life. Those people that are not with you, who have gone on to be with the Lord. I'm going to make something that my mother would like. She went to be with the Lord in 2018. So remembering them, those who just couldn't be here, those who have passed on. Um, so remember those, not the ones who don't want to be with you, who are still in this earth, who have separated from you. Don't dwell on the past and who's not here as far as those people that the season is over. It has ended in a difficult or negative way or something that was hurtful to you. Don't look back um, in that way. Uh, but for those who you want to honor or not hear that, you want to fill your heart with good memories of them, right? Or connect with them, give them a call or do FaceTime. Sometimes I do that with my daughters or my family. Um, when we're cooking, me and my uh, sisters, we send each other because we're in different states. What we're cooking, how our turkeys are coming along, where we used to all live in the same city and get together in somebody's house. When I had a bigger house, a lot of times my house or my other sister's house, and we would get together and we would do Thanksgiving together. We would maybe do a Christmas brunch or something together. We do is we do all these things together and our kids are grown and we live in different states, but we can still connect in a way for people who are just not close, right? And then for those who have gone on to heaven, we can honor them in a special way, right? So that's something that you can do. And then make a list of things and people that you are thankful for and talk about that and be thankful. Bring your conversation up to things that are you're looking forward to, not of just the past and what once was, but what you're what's giving you joy in this season. Maybe sit with some people and say what you're thankful for um, and remind yourself, make a list of your own what you have to be thankful for. And then don't allow yourself to go there. That's number eight. And you know what I'm talking about there. To the past, what I was just talking about, what used to be that ex-husband, that ex boyfriend, um, the friend who did you wrong, the family member, don't allow yourself to go there. That place of sadness and woe and pity, even if it starts out good, reminiscing, and it can take you into a place of depression and sadness, don't allow yourself to go there. Intentionally enjoy yourself, intentionally make plans to be present with the people that you have around you, be present with yourself, um, not do anything that's gonna take you there. Be intentional about cultivating joy and bringing joy and bringing cheer and rejoicing and being thankful in this season. And don't put everything into it. like. You know, it's not what it used to be, so it can't be um, something new. Create new memories. Create new traditions. Create, I'm having to create traditions as a, a single empty nester. Um, and there will be other memories that, uh, God willing, I get grandkids. God willing, I get to be remarried. But for this season, I don't want to look back. I don't want to hold my breath until everything is perfect and just what I want it to be. And it may never be perfect. It may never be what I thought it was going to be. And well, we know it's not going to be that, but it whatever God has lined up for me in the future may not meet the expectation of what I thought it was going to be. And until God brings me into the next season, I'm going to embrace the season that I'm in. I'm going to embrace change and make the most of it in this season. And I encourage you to do the same. Let me know if this video was helpful for you and what most stood out to you. Uh, and let and if you have a tip for someone else, if you have something to add to the list, I think it was about eight, not five, then put it in the comments and, and give some other ideas that people could use to enjoy this holiday season. God bless you. Until next time.